What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna answer a really important question. Can you build up your aerobic capacity, your endurance, while simultaneously optimizing for fat burning? Short answer is yes, and today I'm gonna show you how. So what are these training zones I keep referring to? These are optimal heart rate ranges in which we're either focusing on fat burning or we're focusing on building endurance. The unique thing here is they're not mutually exclusive. There's some overlap between those training zones that most people don't know about. So what, where does that overlap lie? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the zones. First, we have the fat burning zone. That's between 67 and 87% of your maximal heart rate. The aerobic zone, or building up your endurance, is between 58 and 76%. Now, if you guys notice in there, between 67% and 76%, there's some overlap. This is your optimal training zone if your goal is weight loss and building up your endurance, which for most people, that should be your goal. So let's go ahead and figure out how we calculate your specific optimal training zone. Now, before I show you guys the quick and dirty way, I first wanna preface that there is a more accurate way of calculating this optimal training zone, but in order to do that, you're gonna to have to head on over to a human performance institute like the one at UCSF, get a VO2 max test done or a stress test in which they can look at uh, where your optimal training zones are. If you guys don't have those types of resources available or have the money to do so, no worries. I'm gonna show you guys the quick and dirty way. Now, in order to calculate our optimal training zone, we're gonna need some basic tools. The most accurate of which is gonna be the H10 from Polar. This chest heart rate monitor is gonna be the most accurate out of the bunch, but it's also the most expensive. If you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, you can use the wristwatches that they make. These are great. Or if you guys have a Garmin watch or an Apple watch, those are gonna be sufficient too. What we're gonna to need to do first is calculate your resting heart rate. So I'm gonna need you to lay down on the floor and get into a nice relaxed state. Then I want you to track your heart rate for 10 minutes. Whatever your average heart rate is during that time frame is gonna be your resting heart rate. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and calculate our heart rate reserve. Think of this as like your gas tank. This is gonna be whatever you have left over for exercise. In order to do that, we're gonna take 220, which is our hypothetical maximal heart rate. We're gonna subtract your age. So for me, that's 29. And then we're gonna subtract your resting heart rate the number that we just collected before. This number, this heart rate reserve, is gonna be what we're gonna to use to multiply with our training zone percentages that we found out about earlier. So let's go ahead and take a look at those zones again and figure out how we calculate our optimal training zone. For me, my heart rate reserve is 133. The multiplier that we're gonna use first is the 67%. So we're multiplying it by 0.67. So what I forgot to mention in here is that you also have to add in your resting heart rate. So you multiply by the percentage, add your resting heart rate, and that's what gave me the 147. That's gonna be the lowest in which I want my heart rate while I'm training. The training ceiling is gonna be, once again, 133 times 0.76, or the 76%. Once again, add in your resting heart rate, and that's how I got 159 as my training ceiling. That means my optimal training zone is between 147 and 159. Now, I have to preface that this isn't the most accurate way to calculate this training zone, so it might be off by five or 10 beats per minute, but this is the best way that most of us at home, without any sort of equipment can get this figure. So now that you have this optimal training zone, what do you do with this information? Well, what I'd recommend to you is performing some sort of aerobic exercise between 30 and 45 minutes, at least three times per week. The reason why I don't say more than that is because if you're not preparing for any sort of race, then I would think that you'd be balancing that with some form of resistance training or strength training. Because for me, it's all about balance. How can I optimize my time in the gym to check all the boxes? and all the boxes being, how do I take care of my endurance or my cardiovascular health? How can I maintain my weight and stay lean year round? How can I build lean muscle mass? In order to do all those things, I need to be hitting or checking all these boxes. That includes endurance, fat burning, and weight training. Now, speaking of balance, we gotta talk about nutrition because like you guys know, you can't out train a bad diet. Six pack abs are made in the kitchen. 
If you guys are out drinking tons of beer, eating lots of pizza, carbs, you have no sort of restriction on your time feeding window, any of that stuff, I'm sorry. The training window that I just gave you is not going to overturn any sort of bad decisions you're making when it comes to your diet or food choices. So it's important that you pair good nutrition with exercise in order to get the results that you guys are looking for. If you guys found this content valuable, leave me a like, comment. If you guys have any questions on your guys' calculations, let me know what your guys' optimal training zone is down below. And as always, be healthy, be active, and be yourself. Everyone's got something to give this world. You just gotta go out there and give it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.